When the president hits the campaign trail, the Secret Service has to kick it into high gear. The president needs to be among the people, but that's where it's the most dangerous. Protection and politics don't mix. Mistake number three. Even after Kennedy is shot three times, the untrained guards let Sirhan break free. He grabs his pistol and takes control of the room again. That wouldn't happen now. Martial arts expert Martin Wheeler demonstrates how Secret Service agents could eliminate a threat and keep it that way. I'm going to use Ken here as the protectee, and I'm going to be the bodyguard. What we're looking for is mainly you're looking for their hands, you're looking for someone who's acting not quite like everybody else, or if they're masking what they're doing. So someone bringing up the weapon, you've got to control them, get them into a position where you can at least control their hands, see what it is they're doing. If I can, I'm going to access my own weapon. I don't know if theirs is going to work. For Secret Service agents, it's not about being a stronger fighter. It's about fighting smarter. They know how the body works and how to use those biomechanics to get results. In one swift movement, Wheeler uses the barrel of the gun like a lever to take it. Then, by manipulating his elbow, gets the attacker to the ground. To keep him down, Wheeler puts the assailant's arm into a hammer lock and pins him with his knee. To exploit every possible advantage, the Secret Service plants agents into any crowd of people. So the agent has to be able to come at an attacker from any angle and any distance. Sometimes when you're far enough away from somebody, going for the weapon is not as close as dealing with the person themselves. So getting them offline by striking or kicking or controlling is the fastest way to move. With only a split second to prevent disaster, an agent is trained to understand how even the smallest movement could have a big effect. There's some ways of working when you're working against tendons where it'll open up the finger, and so it makes it harder for them to pull the trigger. Anything that attacks the spine, it's very hard for them to control. So striking can be a very effective way of taking down as long as you control the weapon. And to control the weapon, you have to control the wrist. Generally, when you're taking uh, a gun out of somebody's hand, the first things you want to do is try and get the line of fire from the target. You can do that by moving it in different directions, twisting it, turning it. It's a lever, and so the wrist is a lever. So you can kind of take it up from that angle. So basically, you play with the concept of how to control the weapon that takes it directly off the line of fire of the principal. Mastery of the psychological is just as crucial. The idea for the person protecting the protectee is to stay very relaxed, not to excite themselves so that this person doesn't become more excited. They want to work in ways that are very relaxed, so it's hard for them to understand what is happening. The more I kind of jerk my axe, the more likely he is to shoot, so you have to relax and move. As a last resort, agents train to use their own body as a protective shield. So you could easily even use your body to protect your client. Ideally, you don't want to do that because if you get shot, you can't continue to protect them. This kind of dedication is required to ensure politicians can do what they need to do. Working within a crowd demands a sophisticated system to neutralize a bad guy. Back at International Training Equipment, Combat expert Martin Wheeler demonstrates how the Secret Service can up the ante to guard the protectee and spare innocent bystanders. Instantaneous decision-making is extremely important in this line of work. At these ranges, it's very difficult to draw weapons. You need to rely on your hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. And the assailant may not be alone. In this scenario, I'm looking after Ken, who's my protectee. And I have two people who have been a bit more aggressive. So as they're moving forward, I'm trying to control them. As I start to become the problem, and I'm going to separate them. As this one comes in, I'm going to use that to actually pull the weapon and control them. So everything becomes part of the same maneuvers. You're not doing separate maneuvers for separate things. Everything is part of the same flow. The principles to disarming assailants really is to control yourself. You have to control your breathing or your level of relaxation, and you have to have a keen sense of who you're protecting and where they are. By attacking parts of their body, which they really don't understand or supporting them, you're literally taking out fundamental building blocks of their movement. 
it's much easier to control somebody once you sort of control them psychologically than it is just physically. The same combination of mental control and physical technique can also take care of a weapon that might make it through the second perimeter, a knife. Probably the knife at this range. It's difficult to draw and control your weapon, so you have to focus on relaxing. Your desire is to run away from the blade, but you've got to protect somebody, so you've got to go in. So you have to play very light, almost like dancing, in a sense. As the attacker lunges, Wheeler diverts the knife, tips the assailant's head, and controls him with an arm lock. You're sort of playing off the ability of them to literally control themselves, but do it in a way so it's hard for them to understand what is happening to them. Much of the strategy is psychological, remaining calm, outthinking the assailant. Part of it is how you actually present yourself. Do you need to make them feel intimidated or relaxed? I know there's so many things that you can do to start to control somebody. The advantage for the Secret Service is that each agent is trained for just this moment, and the assailant, they hope, is not. In this case, Wheeler deflects the knife by hitting the inside of the wrist with his left hand while punching the ribs with the right. A quick hit to the liver and a right elbow to the spine give Wheeler the upper hand. Next is a knife hand hit to the brachial plexus, a nerve bundle in the neck area that controls the arm holding the weapon. This allows for the takedown, all in less than three seconds.